A government that can censor its critics has license for every atrocity. All right, zip it. It is the beginning of totalitarianism. Zip. Once you start censoring, you're on your way to dystopia and totalitarianism. A exhibit A. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. We sure do live in bizarro world. Imagine if there was a hearing on murdering your spouse and the chair of that hearing was O.J. Simpson, or if there was a hearing on marital fidelity to your spouse, and the chair on that was Bill Clinton and all of his friends from Epstein Island. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a hearing, this is real, on censorship in public spaces, a censorship by the government. They called in RFK to that hearing, and Democrats censored RFK during the hearing. You cannot make this up. Check this out. Every statement that you just made about me is inaccurate. At one point you say I'm anti-vax and that's a bad thing. The other thing, the <laughs> other moment you point out that all my children are vax. I took flu vaccines for 20 years straight. I have never been an anti-vax. These are defamations and mal malignancies that are used to censor me to prevent people from listening to the actual things that I'm saying. But the Democrats still want to engage in a debate they can't control. They want to point to their hand-picked experts and have their own conversation. Trusting the experts is not a function of science. It's not a function of democracy. It's a function of religion and totalitarianism, and it does not make for a healthier population. Mm. And instead of debating him or giving him a chance to explain himself, Democrats tried to shut him up. I move that we move into executive session because Mr. Kennedy has repeatedly made despicable anti-Semitic and anti-Asian comments. Is it the custom of this committee to censor viewpoints that we disagree with from witnesses? Mr. Chairman, I have, a, not a, motion. Point of I have order. a motion on the table. Democrats wanted to censor RFK Jr. at a censorship hearing. This is the party who spent years railing against Big Pharma and not trusting the science. But now, all of a sudden, they're scared of a Democrat asking questions? This is an attempt to censor a censorship hearing. The, the, the charge is in this, and, and by the way, censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my father, to my uncle, to FDR, to Harry Truman, to jo Thomas Jefferson. We have to stop trying to destroy each other, to marginalize, to vilify, to gaslight each other. We have to find that place inside of ourselves of light of empathy, of compassion. Yes, Democrats tried to censor RFK at their own censorship hearing. You can't make it up. Why would they want to censor RFK exactly? Like exactly, wh like wh why would they choose to do this a of all places? Why wouldn't they want to hear from this man who's polling at like 25% in their own party? You know, it's Republicans who are calling in these hearings. Why would they want to censor the a, a man who's running for president as a Democrat. You'd think they'd want to hear from this person. Well, listen to them explain themselves. You think that Democrats are proving RFK Jr.'s point by trying to stop him from coming today and censor him that Democrats are unfairly censoring him? I'm not going to respond to a loaded question like that. You've already decided in your own answer. What are you afraid that he would say under oath today that you want to stop even the American people from having the opportunity to hear? I'm not afraid of anything he would say. I just don't want to hear him. What do you say to people who are concerned that you were trying to censor RFK Jr. by trying to not let him come today? Oh, that's not censorship. Censorship would not be allowing someone to speak. He can speak. That doesn't give him necessarily the ability to have to do it in the halls of Congress. Trying to censor him today proved his point that he is being... Censor him? We were trying to make sure that he didn't cause more harm with his outrageous testimony. I don't think you want to bring bigots before the Congress, but apparently that's par for the course with this majority. Okay, so exactly what was it that they didn't want to hear from RFK? Well, uh, our executive producer, ALX, tweeting this impressive clip. RFK, a government that can censor its critics, has the license for every atrocity. It's the beginning of totalitarianism. There's never been a time in history when we look back and the guys who were censoring were the good guys. True that, says Rob Schneider here. So maybe that's what they didn't want to hear. They were called out during their own committee hearing by Thomas Massey. Wow. 
the irony and cognitive dissonance from the other side of the aisle. I love talking about it. deafening. You could cut it with a knife. They are at the same time denying that censorship is occurring, but suggesting that there's more material that needs to be censored. This is a hearing on censorship that began with an effort, with a formal motion from the other side of the aisle to censor Mr. Kennedy. They do not want him to speak. Yet that is the topic of this hearing. They have kept him from speaking. A collusion between the government and private organizations. Boom. Shakalaka. Man, I mean, the, again, like, if you can eliminate free speech, these people are tyrants. These people are the worst elements of a fascistic enterprise that wishes to silence those who stand up against it. This is exactly what we are talking about when we do this program, when we talk about these kind of issues, and when we ourselves face enormous amounts of censorship. RFK Jr., trusting the experts is not a function of science. It's not a function of democracy. It is a function of religion and totalitarianism, and it does not make for a healthier population. This is what they do not want you to hear. Now, Bill Ackman, uh, who is one of the, you know, billionaire tech founders in Silicon Valley, uh, retweeted RFK's opening dialogue, the one that got him censored there in Congress, saying it's really important that you should hear this. Let's put aside any preconceived notions on Kennedy. These words can help save our democracy and our country. I don't say this lightly. It's the best use of 10 minutes of your day. And we think it's probably the best use of 10 minutes of your day at the end of this video. Check it out. Start. I want to put aside my written statement for a moment and address one of the uh, points that was brought up, I think an important point by the ranking member, that this body ought to be concerning itself with, the, uh, with issues that impact directly the American people. The rising price of groceries, 76% over the past two years for basic food stuff, uh, the war in Ukraine, the inflation issues, the border issues, many, many other issues that concern us all as a nation. We can't do that without the First Amendment, without debate. Uh, when I gave my speech, my announcement speech in Boston uh, two months ago, YouTube, I, I talked about all those issues. I focused on grocery. I focused on the fact that working class people can no longer afford to live in this country. I talked about inflation, all the issues that deeply concern you and that you've devoted your career to alleviating those issues. Five minutes into my speech, when I was talking about Paul Revere, YouTube deplatformed me. I didn't talk about vaccines in that speech. I didn't talk about anything that be, could be was a verboten subject. I just was talking about my campaign and things, the conversation that we ought to be having with each other as Americans. But I was shut down. And that is why the First Amendment is important. Debate, congenial, respectful debate, is the, is the fertilizer, it's the water, it's the sunlight for our democracy. We need to be talking to each other. Now, there, this is a letter that many of you signed, many of my fellow Democrats. I've spent my life in this party, I've devoted my life to the values of this party. This, 102 people signed this. This itself, is evidence of the problem that this hearing was convened to address. This is an attempt to censor a censorship hearing. The, the, the charges in this, and, and by the way, censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my father, to my uncle, to FDR, to Harry Truman, to jo Thomas Jefferson, as the chairman referred to. It is the basis for democracy. It sets us apart from all of the previous forms of government. We need to be able to talk, and, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. It was written for the speech that nobody likes you for. And I was, I was censored not just by the Democratic administration, I was censored by the Trump administration. I was the first person censored by, the, as the chairman pointed out, by the Biden administration two days after it came into office. It ordered a truthful, and by the way, they had to invent 
a new word called malinformation to, to, to censor people like me. If there was no misinformation on my Instagram account. Everything I put on that account was cited and sourced to peer-reviewed publications or government databases. Nobody has ever pointed to a single piece of misinformation that I publish. I was removed for something they called malinformation. Malinformation is information that is true, but is inconvenient to the government that they don't want people to hear. And, it, and that's antithetical to the values of our country. After I announced my presidency, it became more difficult for people to censor me outright. So now I'm subject to this new form of censorship, which is called targeted propaganda, where people apply pejoratives like anti-vax. I've never been anti-vaccine, but everybody in this room probably believes that I have been, because that's the prevailing narrative. Anti-Semitism, racism, these are, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives, and they're applied to me to silence me because people don't want me to have that conversation about the war, about groceries, about inflation, about the war on the middle class in this country that we need to be having. And, and by the way, I want to say this while I'm on the record, that in my entire life and why I'm under oath in my entire life, I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. I have spent my life fighting my professional career, fighting for Israel, for the protection of Israel. I have a better record on Israel than anybody in this chamber today. I'm the only person who has publicly objected to the $2 billion payout that the Biden administration is now making to Iran, which is, a, is a, a genocidal program. I'm the only one who's objected to that. I fought more ferociously for Israel than anybody. But I am being censored here through this target, through, uh, through, through smears, through misinterpretations of what I've said, through lies, through association, which is a tactic we all thought we had been discredited and dispensed with after the Army McCarthy hearings in the 1950s. But those same weapons are now being deployed against me to silence me. I know many of the people who wrote this letter. I don't believe there's a single person who signed this letter who believes I'm anti-Semitic. I do not believe that. There is no evidence of that. Now, I want to say something I think that's, that's more important, and it goes directly to what you talked about, ranking member, which is the, the, the need, the, the, this toxic polarization that is destroying our country today. And how do we deal with that? We are more, this kind of division is more dangerous for our country than any time since the American Civil War. And how do we deal with that? How are we going to, every Democrat on this committee believes that we need to end that polarization. Do you think you can do that by censoring people? I'm telling you, you cannot. You, that only aggravates and amplifies yep. the problem. We need to start being kind to each other. We need to start being respectful to each other. We need to start, start restoring the comedy to this chamber and, and, and to the rest of America. But it has to start here. My uncle, Edward Kennedy, has more legislation with his name on it than any senator in the United States history. Why is that? Because he was able to reach across the aisle, because he didn't deal in insults, because he didn't try to censor people. He brought home people who were antithetical to what he believed in. He came home almost every weekend with people like Orrin Hatch to our house at the compound in Hyannisport. At that time, Orrin Hatch to me was like Darth Vader because I was an environmentalist. And I was saying, why, why is Teddy bringing this guy home? But he knew that he was effective because he understood that comedy and respect and kindness and compassion and empathy for other people 
is the way that we, the only way to restore the function in this, in this chamber. But more importantly, today we need to give an example in the leadership of our country of being respectful to each other. If you think I said something that's anti-Semitic, let's talk about the details. I'm telling you all the things that I'm accused of right now by you. And in this letter are distortions, they're misrepresentations. I didn't say those things. There's fragments that I said, but I denounce anybody who, is, who uses the words that I have said to imply something that is negative about people who are Jewish. I never said those things. And I want to point out also that the chairman pointed to Dennis Kucinich who's fighting behind me. There is no two people in, in the country who feel differently about, more differently about American politics than these two people. <laughs> and yet they were friends. Dennis attended his children's basketball games, attended his daughter's wedding. This is what we need, how we need to start treating each other in this country. We have to stop trying to destroy each other, to marginalize, to vilify, to gaslight each other. We have to find that place inside of ourselves of light, of empathy, of compassion, and above all, we need to elevate the Constitution of the United States, which was written for hard times. And that has to be the premier compass for all of our activities. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.